This is William Dimmick Johnson for my first of my revised Forgotten Realms Gods, the Major Gods, the Creators. First up, Anan, God of the Giants, and his enemy, Goddess Tiamat, Goddess of the Dragons. They symbolize order from Anan and chaos, Tiamat. Anan created an ordered, mighty, powerful peoples who made cities, created great works, built great poems and epics, and got a culture of learning the giants. And Tiamat, in opposition, created the dragons, creatures of pure elemental fury made manifest, mighty and powerful and almost invincible. And these gods and their peoples battled it out, an epical argument over who was right, law or chaos. And Anan eventually was victorious, and threw Tiamat down to the deepest, darkest pit, which became known as the Abyss. And it is her rouse, her, ha her hatred, her screams of frustration that give rise to the demons that plague the world to this day. Unfortunately, Anan was not long in victory. An assassin, a mighty favoured servant of Tiamat, struck him down, and he lies almost at death, death's door as dead as an immortal, unkillable god can be. And so, giant society, giant civilization has fallen to wreck and ruin. Those peoples are now mere barbarians, feared, dangerous, but wild and savage, no longer the great and mighty peoples they once were. Those are the two greatest gods of the world. In their shadow came other gods, other creators of peoples. First was the goddess Yondala, who made a very small people, a very industrious people, people who would grow things and eat things and enjoy the pleasures of what remained in the world, the halflings. Unfortunately, Yondala was foolishly chose to make her people very small. And the next god, Abathar, who made the dwarves, enslaved the halflings and also enslaved Yondala. Yondala is now Abathar's bound concubine and slave. Abathar is everything you'd expect from a dwarf. He embodies civilization. He embodies order. He embodies building things, roads, aqueducts, from this world of the dwarves are Romans. But with all that comes the other aspects. Tyranny, enslavement, brutality, corruption. Abathar is all these things. He is a much more useful god than Moradin. And so we have Abathar as head of the dwarves. Then we have his enemy, Magubliet, the mighty one, god of the goblins, god of the hobgoblins. The hobgoblins are your Phoenicians, your Carthaginians, your Persians. They exist in a mighty military caste, for Magubliet is a military god, a god of steel, a god of order, a god of tactics, and also a god of subjugation, tyranny, and nastiness. And under their banner are all the minor gods, or most of the minor gods. They either come under Abathar for the dwarves, or under Magubliet for the goblins. Those are the two major sides in the world. But there are other creator gods. There is Corellian, creator of the elves, the god of the forest, of the hunt, of trickery, and the god of Hibernia. For he lives in that land. He is the master of the Fae, the lord of the, both the Seelie and non Seelie courts. And every high elf is a personal creation of Corellian, and is made by him when he sees fit to have there to be a new high elf in the world. And they can be male, they can be female, or they can be hermaphrodite or neuter, as Corellian chooses. That is the god of the elves. In opposition to the elves is Groomsh. Corellian's less favoured brother, who got nothing. Not as good looking, not as smart, not as clever. But raw, brutal fury is his. And so he created a peoples to hunt down and strike down every creation of Corellian, the orcs. And the orcs live nor in the northern end of Britannia and pour out, seeking to hunt down and kill any elf they can find. That is the other creator god, Grooch. And those are the major gods, the gods who have created the peoples. 
the next section, we will examine the minor gods. Those gods who just represent some sort of passion or feeling.